Hello, my name is Margaret Adele and welcome to another indie book review. This time it is for the short story collection Tales of Sorcery and Silicone by Terrence McManus. I love reviewing short story collections because it's very nice. They feel like they go by really fast even if they are the same like number of pages as a normal novel because you're completing a lot of stories in that time. This one in particular is made up almost exclusively of either high fantasy or not entirely straight sci-fi, but at least hard sci-fi stories with one horror story thrown in for fun. And uh, if you've been around my channel for a while, you may know that I lean more towards sci-fi than high fantasy these days. So the sci-fi stories in here were much more interesting to me. Uh, they were all taking place uh, in kind of these like almost two separate universes. Uh, Terrence McManus has almost like an entire universe made up of short stories for high fantasy and then the, his short story for his sci-fi are all connected uh even though it might not be the same characters it's still the same ideas and things and they were so inventive even his uh fantasy stories were really inventive which is probably one of my biggest issues with a lot of high fantasy is it's so structured and structured and so samey but in this case, he added a lot of extra new elements that I hadn't thought about before. There were uh, a type of magic based on polyphagic sleep, which though you don't know is, is this idea that if you sleep more often but in smaller periods, it's somehow better for your health. In the real world, it's like, yeah, no, not really. But in this universe, it's basically the idea of people go through polyphagic sleep because you like lose your magic while you sleep. Basically, if you sleep for long periods of time, your magic kind of like ekes out. So these masters will have acolytes that have to wake them up like every half hour or something to make sure they don't lose so much of their magic. There's blood-based magic wherein uh, this evil empire basically taxes the blood out of their like poorest citizens to power everything. And a lot of intriguing techniques. The one... There was one story, Mutable, which I believe was originally sci-fi, and honestly, I think I would prefer it if it had stayed a sci-fi, but it's basically this tournament uh, situation where you have these little balls of goo, and if they hit you, you basically turn into your biggest fear or a mutation thereof, and I would love to see a novel of that done, or like maybe read a novel of that, with like... A sci-fi setting and a tournament and these basically globs that if they hit you, something horrible happens to you. You lose limbs or something. I don't know. I just love that idea <laughs> so much. But uh, that's kind of what I love the most, most about this was that there were so many intriguing concepts. It is definitely more of a concept world book than a character study. That's not to say that there's all unlikable characters. They're all interesting to a certain extent. Uh, there's Gal the... AI given robot form essentially trying to find their own ancestor in one of the early Martian rovers that I really liked. But for the most part, the focus is really more on the worlds, the systems, the ideas, and that kind of thing. And there's a forward before every story kind of telling you what the author was going for, where it came from. Um, my particular favorite uh, is sci-fi. And I don't I don't usually like hard sci-fi too much. Like, I, I enjoy it, but I usually want some kind of extra speculative element in there. Hence why I love space opera so much. But I have to admit, the story about the sentient toaster that gets annoyed because its owner is basically, like, on the floor dying and not making toast. Like, the toaster is not upset that the owner is dying. The toaster is upset because toast is not being made and it is time for toast. <laughs> and I loved that story so much. Like all the techno aspects just kind of added to the like the ludicrousness of it's a toaster. The protagonist is a toaster. <laughs> it was oh it was like it was taking all the seriousness of like a hard sci-fi, but it was so clearly a ludicrous concept and the two together created a delightful comedy that I loved so much. Uh, there are some more of the like hard looking at society uh, sci-fi themes wherein there is this surgery that you can basically undergo that is essentially a futuristic lobotomy that takes away all your negative emotions, it takes away your anxieties, your fears, whatever, and you basically become a happy like blank person. And it's an intriguing concept, um, mostly in that the idea of why would someone choose that after they 
already see what it does to other people. But that idea in itself has been done to death in a lot of different ways back in the days of like Twilight, uh, the Twilight Zone rather. So that concept in itself wasn't as intriguing as the worlds and things introduced. Now, there was one story that kind of missed the mark and not necessarily for the reasons you might think. And the reason that this is only a four star instead of a five, and that is the lone horror story called The Rest. Now, I really enjoy horror short stories. I think that in most cases, I will actually prefer a horror short story over a full horror novel because they work best in ambiguity, and that ambiguity is best served in a short story where they can have a sudden horrible ending and then finished, and you're you're left to imagine the rest. And the general idea of this one was pretty intriguing. It's all about this kid that skips school and goes to this strange house where everything in the yard seems to be covered in rust and he doesn't know why, and he decides to steal this little bird and then gets, you know, caught and sent back to school. And things happen with that rust. So I'm not going to spoil it, obviously. I loved the concept of it. It was a first-person point of view, which I can go back and forth with whether or not I like a first-person point of view if it's an internal voice I really like. And there's multiple points of views. I can usually go for a first-person. But in this case, the language was just... <laughs> It was, um, I think it was supposed to be, like, set in the UK, I think. At least I cannot think of a single human being that I've met in America that would speak like this. But it was sort of spoken in all the slang and written out that way. Like, even the non-dialogue, like, the narrative was all written in that kind of slang. And so it took a second to learn how to read. And also, he's just a really unlikable protagonist. In a first-person point of view, you need to have a, a protagonist that people want to follow. And there are certain things that were said that uh, might have even gone beyond problematic and gone into slurs. Uh, so that was uh, not fun. I love the plot and the idea, but the writing style and the general setup was <laughs> just not good. And to the author's credit, uh, he actually realizes that because in the foreword for that story, he even talks about how he debated whether or not to ever let that story see the light of day and that it was basically a sign of him experimenting because it is the only story told in the first person point of view. And it shows <laughs> that it's not a style that he's familiar with. And it sucks because the general concept and plot was super intriguing, but I just couldn't get over the writing. But beyond that, um, again, this is not a character study. This is a concept or idea study. But I honestly think this is actually a really good read if you're brainstorming. Because there's so many different quick ideas that you could easily not steal, not plagiarize, but like take and have fun with yourself because the idea of for me a tournament in which you throw things at your opponent and something happens not death when it hits them that idea to me is so intriguing it's so cool and I don't have to plagiarize Mutaball but I can take that idea and turn it into something for myself so if you are currently in the world building process and you want some you need some new juices in the back of your mind because everything feels so much the same especially in high fantasy but anyway i would highly suggest this one uh there's definitely a lot of fun things to play around with some things that are addressed and i believe that this is part of a wider universe there are more stories in each of these shared universes that you see in this book and i believe it's on his website terry talks fiction but I don't remember. So uh, there's definitely more where this came from that you can check out. Uh, I know that short story collections don't necessarily get a lot of love, but I really enjoyed this one, and I think you would as well. Now, if you are an indie author and you are interested in a review like this one, please let me know. I will have my email down in the description below. I will also have my review policy down there. Please give that a read through. It answers a lot of questions and saves us a lot of time. And with nothing else to say, I hope you have a wonderful day and a marvelous tomorrow.